Let's continue and look at decision support systems. Now, what is a decision support system? These systems can be defined as an organized collection of people, procedures, software, databases, and devices, typically what we know as our computer-based information systems. But the aim of these systems are to solve problems. Now, if we look at the components needed for a decision support system, we need to realize that we're going to have information that would be extracted from various external databases. So our whole decision support system would make use of data. It's going to make use of our databases. It's going to make use of a model, data, model base, and we're going to talk about these a little later on. It will use a model management system. So the model base will work through a model management system that will extract data from external data sources. That would be linked to our database management system, which ultimately also functions with our database, and that can also use information from various internet sources. Now, the focus of a decision support system is to aid decision making. What we learned about in the first section, where we typically have problems that can either be classified as perhaps unstructured and semi-structured. These systems are used by managers at all levels. Now, what are the requirements of a decision support system? These systems provide us rapid access to information. They provide us with reporting and presentation capabilities. They provide us with both textual and graphical information. They typically support drawdown analysis. They allow us to perform complex, sophisticated analysis and comparisons using various packages. And then they also support the optimization, satisfying and heuristic approaches that we learned about before. These systems will perform simulation analysis and they will also aid us in forecasting future opportunities and problems. Now, what are the capabilities of decision support systems? These systems support the various problem solving phases. They will support decisions based on various frequencies. For example, if it's ad hoc systems or decisions, we're going to have those decisions that only occur a few times in the organization's existence, so only when something weird happens. It can be institutional decision support systems where the decision taking typically happens multiple times a year or um, perhaps once a year. These systems support various problem structures, so they will typically aim to support highly structured problems where a lot of information is available, a lot of data and variables, which are typically straightforward. Or we might find that we're going to look at semi-structured problems where some variables is known but others are unknown. And these are typically more complicated to go and resolve and to get to decisions. We also need to realize that they will typically support various decision making levels. So again, if we think about our first section, our first topic discussion where we talked about the pyramid of in a business where we find the various systems and types of decisions, DSS can actually be used on all levels of decision making. Now let's go and look at that by looking at the following image. If we think about our original diagram, we knew that we have decisions that takes place on the operational, tactical and strategic level. And then we need to incorporate our decision frequencies. So if you think about it on the operational decision, there's a lot of activities taking place typically through your e-commerce, in-commerce, as well as your TPS systems. And then as it goes to the higher levels, we would find that we would need um, less frequent decisions. Now, the next question might be, what is the difference between a decision support system and a management information system? Now, it all comes down to the types of decisions that, or the types of problems that we're trying to solve. 
it will ultimately come down to the amount of support that's given to the user, the emphasis and the approaches followed for decisions, as well as the type, the speed, the output, and the development of the system that's being used. Okay, so what kind of system are you using, and how quickly can it give you information or access to information and decisions? Now, the following table perhaps better compares decision support systems with MIS systems. For example, if we look at the approaches, DSS serves, a direct, serves as a direct support system that provides interactive reports on screens, whereas with MIS, we typically find it's an indirect support of system and our, our report is mainly in printed format. For the development side, with DSS, users are more involved, whereas with MIS, these are typically our older type systems. The emphasis in DSS is placed on the actual decisions and the decision-making styles and processes, whereas with MIS, the emphasis is only placed on our information. On the output side, for DSS, we would find that the reports that was produced would mainly be in the form of graphical dashboard type information so it's going to be more visual screen oriented but it also allows you to go and print it out whereas with MIS the aim is printed reports and documents if we look at the problem types DSS can handle unstructured problems Whereas with MIS, the focus is mainly on structured problems. If we look at the speed, DSS is very flexible, can be implemented by its users, so it takes less time to develop and to respond to requests. Whereas with MIS, um, it typically takes longer to get feedback and responses. On the support side, it DSS supports all aspects and phases of decision making. Ultimately, it doesn't replace the decision maker, but it just aids that person in coming to conclusions. Whereas with MIS, in most cases, we can find that it would make automatic decisions and ultimately it can replace the decision maker. If we look at the type of system, DSS are usually your online type systems, gives you real-time information, and typically in the form of computer terminals and display screens, which you fill in your information and you get immediate responses. With MIS, as indicated, typically you would interact with the printed reports that was generated by the system and ultimately it's not going to be real-time information. If we look at the users for each system, DSS supports individuals, small groups and as well as the entire organization, whereas with the MIS system it's mainly aimed at the organization itself, so it doesn't cater for individual people. Let's continue and look at the different components of a decision support system. Now, as mentioned, decision support systems need to use data from various databases, and at this stage we did cover it in a lot of detail in topic 3, so a database is an organized collection of information. It's going to work with a database management system or your DBMS, which would allow your managers and decision makers to perform quantitative, qualitative analysis on all of the data in your database, data from your data warehouses, as well as data marts. And ultimately, it can also include information from external data sources. Now, on the other side, the DBMS will be linked to the model management software, the MMS, which is actually the system that coordinates the use of all the models that we're going to use in our DSS system. Now that the model base is also linked to the MMS, which provides the decision makers access to different models. So the models would allow us to go and look at our information and to come to various conclusions. The model base would be linked to the user interface or dialog manager. So this is typically where the user would interact with the system through the MMS, through the model base, through the DBMS, to the different databases, 
enter the requirements and ultimately get outputs and decisions from the system. So ultimately the interface allows the user to interact with the system. It includes all the aspects of communication between the user as well as the hardware and software that's been used in the system as well as access to the internet and various other computer-based information systems. In the next section we're going to continue and look at some subunits of DSH, DSS in the form of our group support systems as well as executive support systems.